Brigade Commander Peter Monsoor restored the Iraqi city of Karbala into coalition control after the 2004 uprising. He was later asked by General David Petraeus to assist in the strategic planning and implementation of the surge. So it's no wonder that his students at The Ohio State University could learn a thing or two about military history from someone who's lived it. Military history and violence and conflict have been a part of human history uh, since the beginning of recorded time. And if you don't study it, you may end up with policies that are detrimental to the well-being of the nation. I'm uh, Dr. Peter Monsoor, and I am the General Raymond uh, E. Mason, Jr. Chair of Military History at Ohio State. We cover the range of military history from the ancient world to the present. Ohio State is the nation's preeminent power in military history. We have five military historians on our faculty. It's an amazing number given that there are many major research unities that don't have any. And when you don't have that many programs nationwide, it's really crucial to keep those that are in existence prospering. I teach both undergraduate and graduate courses. My particular interests are World War II, the Iraq War, which I had two combat tours in, and counterinsurgency warfare. My first tour was as a brigade commander. I commanded the 1st Brigade, 1st Armored Division in Baghdad. It was a crucial year because it was the first year of the counterinsurgency conflict. After my time as a brigade commander, I went to New York to serve as a senior military fellow on the Council on Foreign Relations. And it was there that I met General Petraeus. He looked at me and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm a senior military fellow and I'm researching counterinsurgency combat and I'm studying the Iraq War and writing a book. And um, that obviously triggered a thought in his mind because a couple weeks later I got orders to join him at Fort Leavenworth. What he wanted me to do was to help him refashion U.S. doctrine for counterinsurgency warfare. I also served on the Council of Colonels, which helped the Joint Chiefs of Staff rethink the strategy for the Iraq War because it was pretty clear to us that we were on the path to defeat. As a part of that effort, the surge strategy was born. General Petraeus and I had been looking at Iraq from afar, and uh, we knew that it was uh, a very difficult situation, but we really didn't know how difficult until we got there on the ground. Uh, there were barricades everywhere, holes in the ground due to roadside bomb explosions. The buildings had been pockmarked with shell fire. We realized that time was not on our side, and we had to get to work. Protecting the Iraqi people was the most important goal. And that to do that, we had to get more forces into Iraq and have them live right there in the neighborhoods where Iraqi people lived, worked, and slept. For the next 16 months, I was on uh, the whirlwind as we executed the surge in some very trying times. Well, it's a little bit surreal seeing the process of strategy play out in real time with real people. I think it's helped me as a military historian, having seen it firsthand. It gives me a great advantage in writing about it, which I plan to do for a long time to come. I think it's helped me as a teacher you know, to be able to communicate to my students the real difficult nature of some of these very tough decisions that have to be made. It is really critical for policymakers to understand that um, they can't just choose the type of war that they're going to fight. Uh, they have to recognize the kind of war uh, that it is. History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And if you study the broad sweep of military history, you find that these sorts of insurgencies and counterinsurgencies go all the way back to the ancient period and probably before that as well. In the modern era, non-state actors, whether they be Julian Assange or Osama bin Laden uh, have more power due to the tools of modern technology. And I think uh, there will be some refashioning of uh, security theory as a result. In my classes, uh, I try to impart on the students uh, an understanding of the role of conflict in human history. I know that many of these students will go on to do great things in their lives and many of them will end up being in positions of power 
uh, either here in Columbus or in Washington, D.C. It's our role as professors to prepare them for the time when they have to make those, uh, those decisions that are going to change the course of history. And I'd like to think that the Buckeyes that we produce will be able to do that very well.